It was springtime, the sun shining hope to the masses, the trees singing Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish, and I was late for class. University of Pretoria, a.k.a. Tux, first year with big dreams and a crush. There she is, the most beautiful creature that ever lived, the girl I had a crush on, Feta. If only you could see me blushing all over the lecture room doorway. She is sitting at the front, her eyes bright as the incoming traffic during the night at the freeway. She then turned and noticed me as I tried my best to move slowly not to disturb the lecturer. She smiled. You had to be there, I am not exaggerating, okay? Her smile broke the laws of time. I saw myself in the future with a beautiful family wearing matching sneakers playing 30 seconds. I mean the wifey kind of a vibe when she smiles. I finally made it to the back and took a seat, placed my backpack on the floor next to the guy I was sitting with. Philosophy, Phil 120. While listening to the lecturer talking about theory of relativity, I was also trying to figure out how stupid I was not to go and sit next to her. A little background about me. I am one of those people who are very shy. I mean shy shy. I would sit next to you in a train for an hour without saying anything, just staring at the abyss, simulating how I will talk to you if words could actually come out of my mouth. So yes, I chickened out to sit next to her. After a few minutes, the lecturer tells us that we can have a five minutes break. I finally got the courage to approach her. On my way down to this distant future full of possibilities, I realized that I forgot my backpack. I went back to get it. In my surprise, it was gone. Somehow the person who sat next to me took it and left his. Suddenly my heartbeat paused. I am not much a fan of placing valuable things in a backpack, but that day something was in it something that no human being should ever see. I panicked and asked those who were sitting next to us if they knew where the guy went, but none were paying attention. Suddenly I saw one of my former high school mates who I did not even recognize from the distraction conjured by my crush. Zine, one of the brightest guys from my high school days. He asked me what happened. I explained to him that some guy took my backpack and left his. They looked similar, but mine was black and his was darker shaded blue. Luckily, Zine knew the guy and said he probably went to another class to his girlfriend. He usually does that when he wants to skip his classes. We both then went to his girlfriend's lecture room and we did not see him, so as his girlfriend. Zine told me maybe we should try his place. He lived not far from campus. We both went and to our surprise, the dude is having a party. Zine has been to one of his parties. He then told me to wait outside because only people who knows the secret password can enter. I asked him what was the password. He told me that it is not just a word, but how you say it and what you do after. He told me to watch him. There were a lot of people inside the yard dancing to the weekend. Blinding lights. I don't know whom they are nor where they came from, but they could move like nobody's business. I saw my leg moving by itself. I mean this song. Back to Zine. He said something to the bouncer and then quickly pulled a rope at the top of the gate and a bell rang. Yes, a church kind of a bell. Weird. I thought to myself. The bouncer then let him in. I then saw the backpack stealing guy approach Zine. It looked like Zine was more angry than I was as things started to look heated between them. Zine then came out and told me that the guy sold my backpack to one of the notorious gang leaders in the city for a lot of money. Zine asked me what was in the backpack that was so valuable. I was more interested in finding the backpack than explaining the content in it. I just told him I will explain it later. He said the guy told him that the gang leader is taking the backpack to the Spring Forest. As soon as I heard the mention of Spring Forest, I knew what was at stake. I would have never thought anyone could know what to do with it. But I was wrong. Maybe the gang leader was not an ordinary person, I thought to myself. Zine was not happy about my proposal to follow the gang leader to the Spring Forest because there were stories about an ancient clan that lived there known as the Shadow Seekers. They say they hunt their preys during the day because of their bloodlust, but at night they are the most peaceful creatures in the universe. I told Zine that no one has ever laid eyes on those creatures. Maybe they are just stories, but I knew that if I don't get the backpack before night, something really bad will happen. Time is 2.38 p.m. We arrive at the Spring Forest. There are a lot of tourists who came to see the creatures. The Spring Forest is... How can I say it? It looks like ruins from old buildings, but those ruins are covered by the green trees and flowers of all colors. Near the entrance, there is a fountain. 
It is like the Garden of Eden, some may say. It is beautiful. You won't believe me unless you see it yourself. I was awe. If God created this world, he or she would have started with this place. We manage to get past the entrance and a loud roar is heard not far from the entrance and the tourists are starting to panic. Zine looks sharp as ever, like he is ready for a fight. I am glad that I brought this guy along, I thought to myself. I never imagined him as the fighting type, but when it comes to intelligence, he is the type of person I want to be in a war zone with. Next thing we know, a creature moving so fast got past us and stopped just by the entrance. It looked like a child, but with an enormous head. Big brown eyes that could see the future, I assumed. Dark brown skin, but shiny like it was glowing. Teeth that could bite a steel in one bite. Yes, they were very sharp. As much scared I should have been when it suddenly turned its big eyes towards us. I saw sadness, and Zine was long gone, I realized. I remembered the stories that they hunt their prey by seeing their shadow. I ran towards the trees, where my shadow could blend in with the trees, and that's where Zine was hiding too. I gave him a look, like why did you leave me behind, dude? He gave me a look back like he was saying instincts kicked in. The creature kept looking around as if it could not see us. Then it ran back to the entrance, where we started hearing screams. My guess is that the tourists got more than what they came for. I told Zine we need to move forward. We can't go back to the entrance. Zine did not even argue. We moved past the forest and the ruins, and when we reached a place where the buildings looked intact, we stopped. It was weird that the place so old would still have buildings that looked like they were maintained. I did not even have to say anything Zine already knew what I was thinking. We heard another loud roar, the same as the one before when the creature came. Zine, as usual, quick to hide. I was about to join him, but it was too late I was spotted by another creature. But this one looked older, and the head was normal like ours. Same with its eyes, light skin color, but it still had sharp teeth. I am guessing they were meant to devour me at this point. It looked right at me like I was a meal it prayed for or ordered at Uber Eats. I did not want Zine to be found out, so I moved away from him and saw myself in a garden. I mean, why is there a garden in a forest? Slowly moving backwards and the creature slowly approaching, I felt sudden movements behind me and there, another creature appeared. This one looked different. No big head, big eyes, nor sharp teeth, and it spoke. I would have thought it was human, but its skin was the difference. It had a sunlight kind of a skin. Not too bright, but sure could extend my shadow by just been near me. I thought this is it. I have finally met my end, in this beautiful garden caught between two creatures. The creature behind me spoke in an ancient language and the other creature which was already preparing spices for its meal, me, disappeared. One creature left, but something told me not to move an inch. The creature then moved closer and pointed towards the garden exit and said, The one you are looking for is there. Never have I been this confused in my life. I mean not even Roranoa Zoro's directional issues could hold a candle to how confused I was. The creature also disappeared, and Zine came out of hiding. We had no idea what just happened, but we still had to get the backpack. Time was 4.21 p.m. sunset was approaching, and we did not have time to process what just happened. We went through the garden exit, and there, we saw the gang leader sitting on a chair drinking what looked like grape juice under the grape tree. Well, 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 who do we have here? She annoyingly said to herself. To be honest, I never imagined a gang leader would look like this. She looked more like a philosophy professor, blonde dreadlocks and wearing post-apocalyptic dark clothes. I know right, she looked cool. Zine, who was already looking around for the creatures, bumped my shoulder and with his eyes pointed at something near the gang leader, and there was my backpack. The gang leader grabbed the backpack close to her and said, Are you looking for this? As she slowly unzipped the backpack. I was now in panic mode. I know I have met creatures whom we thought never existed, and probably witnessed a bunch of tourists getting devoured. But at this moment I was so scared as it was sunset, and the gang leader was about to open the backpack, the timing would have never been worse. I pleaded with the gang leader to not open it, but my plea was futile. Zine tried to run towards her to grab the backpack, but one of the creatures we met earlier appeared in front of him, and he froze right there out of fear. At this moment, everything was about to unfold, that would change the cause of history. 
life as we know it, was about to change. She then pulled out a book, dark in color, but it was emitting light rays, as if light itself was trapped and trying to escape. She then opened the first page, and an earthquake cried out. The creatures roared as she read the first sentence, 